Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to NEC Online. Thank you for joining us. And uh, it's a lovely spring morning outside, isn't it? I know we're uh, in our homes and we're um, not able to, or well, not able to all be together um, in the way that we'd like to and, and sing together, but at least we can uh, join in this way and we can hear God's word together. Um, we're going to be thinking this morning of uh, how God gives good gifts to us as his children and Jesus' encouragement in the Sermon on the Mount to ask and to seek and to knock. Um, but uh, we, we know that, that God gives good gifts, but we also need to acknowledge that there are times when um, God not only gives, but sometimes he, he takes away. And I suppose we're, we're going through a season of, of when we've experienced things taken away from us. Um, uh, physical fellowship, uh, singing together, um, and lots of things that, um, that we can't do at the moment. Things that have been taken away. But whether God gives or whether... Um, he chooses to take away. Um, we can say with Job, blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's a, a, a reminder for us, isn't it? When we go through difficult times, um, that the same God who gives is the same God um, who takes away. And we can worship him um, in whatever season of life we're going through. So maybe this week has been a, a week of blessing for you. Maybe you've experienced uh, good gifts from God, or maybe it's been a, a hard week. Maybe you've really felt um, the loss of particular things and things being taken away from you. Um, but whatever situation you're in this morning, um, we can lift our praises together um, to our Father. So uh, we're going to do that with our first song, um, which is based on that verse from Job. So let's sing together.
Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you are the same God uh, when the world is all as it should be and the sun is shining down on us as the sun uh, is shining this morning and we're feeling the first um, uh, the first days of, of spring and uh, Lord, we, we, we feel um, hope and, and optimism. Um, but Lord, you're also the same God when uh, we're going through the desert place and we're uh, feeling broken and Lord, we don't know how we can carry on. And some of us might be feeling like that this morning. Um, and Lord, wherever we are um, and wherever our uh, emotions might be, um, Lord, we thank you that, uh, that you um, are worthy of our praise. Whatever our situation, uh, you are um, the, the, the sovereign Lord and we want to bless you and praise you today. We want to seek you um, for the good gifts that you want to give us. And Lord, we want to come in faith to you uh, this morning and to ask, Lord, that you would, you would give us all that we need. Uh, you would give us um, the gift of, of your Holy Spirit so that we can uh, know you better, so that we can um, experience um, your love um, through our Lord Jesus as the Holy Spirit um, dwells within us and so that we can um, live out um, uh, the, the life that you've given to us. We can um, uh, bear the fruit of, of your spirit and, and be the people that you've called us to be. Um, bless us, Lord, and, uh, and help us, Lord, in, in this time together. And may you be glorified um, in all that is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it's now time for our CSI, um, so I'm going to hand over to John for that. Thank you, John. Good morning. How are you? Right. Now, as Pastor Andrew said, we are going to be looking at uh, gifts and good gifts. Now, I'm a dad, and uh, I've got three children, all grown up now. But when they were younger, they would ask me for things. So... Next slide, please. Everybody loves to get a present. What would make a really, really good gift? Next. Here's my daughter, Emily. Next. Thank you. Now, she never looked like that, but that's good enough. And she might say, Dad, Dad, could I have something really, really nice to eat? Maybe something healthy? Next. And, oh, they look good. And I go, yeah, why not? Go ahead. Here, have one of these. Next. Ah, now that wasn't quite what she had in mind. Okay, well maybe we're at the seaside. And she got oh, about this. Whoops, nearly there. Next, yes, please. Next. I'm at the seaside. I would like what you get at the seaside. A stick of rock. That's what I think. Stick. Rock. Well, this could go one of two ways, couldn't it? Here you are, Emily. Have this. No, that wasn't quite again what she had in mind. Okay, next, please. A pet. Oh, we all love a pet. Daddy, daddy, could I have something that's furry and really happy? Next. Oh, furry. And happy. What's the furriest, happiest creature I could think of? Next. Oh, that does look happy. In fact, he's laughing all the time. How happy can you get better than that? There you go. Well, maybe not. Now, I'm not the world's greatest dad. But even I know that those really weren't quite the right gifts that we should be giving. Next. Now, in the Bible, it says this, <laughs> except it's half covered up. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Okay, so what would a good gift look like? Next, please. What are the greatest 
and the greatest gifts that God can give to you. How about this? Next. How about health and good looks and youth? It would be lovely things to have. Everybody wants to be healthy and good looking and young. That'd be a, be a really good gift. Next. Or how about fame? Popularity. Everybody loves you. You walk into the room and everybody stops talking and wants to be your friend. What a lovely gift that would be. Or maybe next. Yeah. Most things can be fixed with large amounts of money. That would be a really good gift. Yes, Lord, I'd like those gifts very much. I'd like to be young and beautiful. Yes, yes, I would. And popular and, and everybody loves me. And of course, if I was immensely rich, that would be amazing. But you see, our Heavenly Father is really, really wise. And despite those gifts sounding great, God knows what we really need. Because you see, if you are going on the road to destruction, if you are going to go to a really bad place, it's no good being good looking or famous or rich. You need to be saved from that situation. And God knew that the best gift, the most precious gift, the most amazing gift that could be ever given would be a way that we could be saved. And there's only one way and there's only one gift good enough. Next slide, please. And it says, oh, we've seen this one before. For God loved, so loved the world that he gave his best gift, his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Can you think of a better gift than that? I don't think so. So let's finish our talk with a prayer of thankfulness that God knows how to give not just the good gifts, but the best gift. Shall we pray? Oh, now what's that again? It's one, that's it, two, three. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as families, we give gifts. Sometimes they're good, sometimes not so much. But you, our Heavenly Father, know how to give us gifts not just good gifts but the best thank you that you loved us so much that you didn't spare your only son and you gave jesus to die on that cross for us so that we could be saved amen right we chose a chose a, a lively chorus so dave take it away please Destiny. 
knock, 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 knock. God opens up the door. When you ask, He cares. When you seek, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. Right, thank you, John. And we'll keep thinking about asking and seeking and knocking uh, later on. Um, but let's uh, think about this evening uh, and just encourage you to come to our service tonight. Uh, you can either come to the building in person. Um, and if, if you'd like to do that, then um, you can use the, the NEC attendance booking group on Faith Life um, or, or just uh, get in touch with myself or Dave direct. Um, if you'd like to book a seat um, but it's also on zoom as well um, at six o'clock and we're continuing our series in joseph and then we'll follow that um that study on um in our home groups this thursday at 7 45 so uh, get in touch with your home group leaders um for for the details of that and if you'd like to join a home group um, and you're not yet part of a home group then um then get in touch with, with myself and we can uh, we can point you in the right direction uh, we've also got the uh, uh, the Kids Club and Explorers on Friday. Remember um, the, the new times of six till seven and quarter past seven to quarter past eight for um, Explorers. Um, now, uh, from next Sunday, uh, we're going to have a, a giving focus week for John and Hannah. Um, uh, last Sunday evening, hopefully you, you were... Uh, with us and, and you were able to hear about the work of Reach Beyond and what John and Hannah are going to be doing as they um, as they're sent out, God willing, to Central Asia um, in later in the spring, um, April, May time perhaps. Um, and as a church, we, we are sending them out into the mission field um, and we want to be able to support them um, prayerfully, but also um, financially. We have a responsibility of supporting them financially as a church um, so before they they go and um, they're actually planning to leave Newark um, by the end of this month um, not not to go straight to Central Asia but to go to Hull and um, to stay with Hannah's parents um, but a, a, as they leave Newark we, we want to bless them uh, with financial gifts um, to support them um, in their work on the mission field um, so um, if you haven't yet um, given to John and Hannah, if you haven't yet set up a, a standing order, um, then um, perhaps this, this is a week where you can think about that. Maybe you can consider um, a one-off gift, or maybe if you're able, you, you can um, sign up to, a, a, to regular giving for John and Hannah. And um, so we, we, we leave it with, with you, um, what you're able to give and, and how you're able to give. But um, as a church, we, we want to be able to um, to support them and, and to send them off um, with with a, a gift as they as they serve the Lord. So that's um, from next Sunday to the following Sunday, um, and uh, uh, we're going to pray now um, for John and Hannah and um, and for the ministry of, of the church. So let's pray together. Father, thank you again for that reminder that you are a loving God who gives good gifts to your children. And if um, human fathers know how to give good gifts, then how much more do you, the Heavenly Father, know how to give good gifts? We thank you, Father, for 
the way that you um, provided for us as a, as a church. And um, Lord, we thank you that you um, have sustained us and sustained the, the ministry of Newark Evangelical Church over many years. And thank you, Lord, um, that we've been able to give generously as a church, not only to the work in Newark and, and, and the wider area, but also to mission overseas as well. And uh, thank you that as a church, we, we support um, the Gordon family. Um, and Lord, that we, we now um, are also supporting the Williams family as well as, as they seek to, uh, to obey your calling, to go to Central Asia, to serve as, as doctors and to use the gifts that you've given them. Uh, we we um, thank you for the work of, of Reach Beyond that they're joining. We thank you for the, the heart of that mission to reach the unreached, to particularly go to people groups um, who have not yet heard the gospel or where there is a such a, a low uh, proportion of evangelical Christians that it, it's not likely that people in those places will, will hear the good news of Jesus that we've already heard this morning and, and had the privilege of being able to read and hear about every day but other people don't um, and so we pray for these uh, these countries in Central Asia um, where Reach Beyond works we pray um, for all the aspects of of the work of that mission and, and we pray for John and Hannah Lord and um, that you continue to, to guide them um, as they head towards uh, being sent out um, in, in, in a couple of months time Lord we, we pray that you would um, provide that the rest of the support that they need financially and we thank you that you've um, given to them um, so much already and um, for all those who are, um, are generously giving um, towards this work and Lord, we, we trust you for that that last uh, amount that they need and Lord, we pray for um, for Max and for Zoe with uh, the change this will be for them as well Lord, we pray that it will be a, a really positive um, new uh, adventure for them and Lord, that they would, um, as they see their parents' faith in action, and as they see them working for you in a, a, a different culture, uh, Lord, and um, as, as they see what, what you um, are doing through their parents as they grow up, Lord, that they would want to, um, to serve the same God and, and to follow you as, as their Lord, um, as uh, their mum and dad do. Um, pray, Lord, that the impact that you uh, will have on on the people um, in, in that country where they're going or will, will be um, will, will, will just be something that, that you've already uh, planned you've already um, have in mind that the people that they're going to be meeting the uh, the things that they'll be doing or thank you that it's it's all in your hands and although there might be some uncertainty at the moment about um, what what things will look like or thank you that you have already gone before them and we trust, Lord, that you will sustain them and that you will help them. And Lord, we, as, as we send them out, we also pray um, for, for those of us um, still here in you, Lord, that we be able to carry on uh, the mission that you have given to us to reach people uh, in this town. And we also pray for Firmwood Community Church as well, Lord, and their desire to reach out into that estate with the gospel. Uh, may you uh, bless this work, uh, bless all that we do um, as a church from uh, the, the younger ones um, with the, with the, the kids club, the explorers group, the clay group, um, uh, right up to, to older people. We think of the, the link with Lancaster Grange that, that Firmwood Community Church has. Um, and may you bless um, all of this work and be glorified in it, we pray. And we ask that your kingdom would come, that your rule on this earth would be established and strengthened as more and more people follow Jesus as their king. In his name we pray. Amen. We're going to have our Bible reading now um, and uh, Sarah is going to read for us. Thank you Sarah.
The reading is from Matthew 7, 7 to 13. No, 7 to 12. No, 7 to 13, is it? 7 to 12. Um, 7 to 12 sorry. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Amen. Thank you. Well, I'm going to have another song um, before we think more about that passage uh, and the faithfulness of our Father to give us all that we need.
Amen. Great is thy faithfulness. Uh, we'll do have Matthew 7 open um, in your Bibles. Uh, we're coming to the end of the Sermon on the Mount now. Uh, we've only got two more sermons on the Sermon on the Mount um, as we um, head towards Easter. And I just want us to just to have a think back to what we've already heard from Jesus um, as, he, as he teaches on the mountainside in Matthew's Gospel. Uh, we, we started this way back in September, so you have to cast your minds back. And I want you to think about what part of Jesus' sermon have you found most challenging? Uh, perhaps it was the Beatitudes, uh, Jesus' description of what the people of the kingdom look like. Perhaps it was the teaching on anger and reconciliation or lust, you know, turning the other cheek, going the extra mile, loving our enemies. Uh, maybe it was around giving and fasting or praying or that challenge of where is your treasure? Is it on earth or in heaven? What about don't worry? Or judging others that we looked at last week. Or perhaps as, as you uh, read the sermon, just the standards that Jesus lays out before us have felt beyond you. I mean, after all, Jesus says in Matthew 5 verse 48, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. At the heart of this sermon it is a call to be like God. To live as his children, to live with him as our heavenly father, to love as he loves, to forgive as he forgives, to live out his righteousness, a righteousness that surpasses that of the, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Can any of us really claim to have lived and loved as our heavenly father? Well, for anybody who feels daunted, by the standard of righteousness that Jesus lays out for us in, in his sermon, there is hope in the words that we read in Matthew 7. That Jesus sums up the whole law of God with that one golden rule in verse 12. But before that, he gives a golden promise. So we'll look at the promise first in verses 7 to 11. And then we'll think about how it connects to the rest of the sermon. But before that, let's just consider the content of this promise that Jesus gives to us. Jesus tells us to ask and it will be given to us. To seek and we will find what we're looking for. And to keep knocking because the door will be opened. Now, do you remember a few weeks ago, uh, I think... The, the service when we were um, in the church building, uh, we heard about Jesus' story in Luke 11. And uh, we were imagining that we were going to a friend's house late at night, asking for some food because an unexpected guest has come to our own home. And you knock on the door and a voice from inside shouts out, what time do you call this? It's midnight. All my family are in bed. What are you playing at? Why are you asking me for bread at this hour of the night? But you're so desperate. that You keep knocking and you keep asking. And eventually your friend gives you what you need. And uh, Jesus says in Luke 11 that the lesson there is that we should pray like that. We should pray like somebody who is so desperate that they're willing to go to a friend at midnight, wake them up, wake up their whole family, maybe the whole street as well, to get what they need. Of course, this doesn't mean that God reluctantly gives us what we need. It doesn't mean that we, we have to badger him um, in the way that you might have to, to, to keep knocking on the door of a, a reluctant friend who, who doesn't want to get out of bed. No, that, that's not the picture of, of God that Jesus gives us. He, God is a good father. He knows how to give good gifts to his children. As John was sharing the CSI, he knows how to do that far better than any human father. So God is willing 
to give all that we need. But are we willing to ask? Do we realise how desperate we are for his help every single moment of every day? But I think that there's some important questions that we need to ask about this promise. What is it that we should be asking for? What should we be seeking? What are we expecting to get when the door is opened to us? What are the good gifts that God wants to give his children? Well, we don't have to look too far for those answers because Jesus, in a way, has already given us the answer to those questions. Now, if you look back to chapter 6, verse 33, there are two things Jesus says that we should seek. But seek first his kingdom, God's kingdom, and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. So God wants to give us all kinds of good gifts, material gifts, the the physical things that we need for everyday life. But the things we should be asking and seeking for are his kingdom and his righteousness. And as a good father, God will give us everything else that we need as well. And that is a very neat summary of the Sermon on the Mount. It's all about God's kingdom and God's righteousness. We thought about God's kingdom in the Lord's Prayer, didn't we? Your kingdom come. It's a prayer for God's rule to be established. For him to be king, not just in this world, but in my life as well. But we should also seek his righteousness. And this is a righteousness that fulfills the law and the prophets, the whole Old Testament. It's living in a way that pleases God. Because it's living in line with his revealed will and his character. And Jesus has been explaining what this looks like in this sermon. He's been telling us what God's righteousness looks like. And now he says... Ask for and seek out this righteousness I've been describing and God, your father, will give it to you. That's why it's such a a glorious golden promise. You see, the, the context of this promise is very important. In Luke's gospel, this same promise about asking, seeking and receiving from God it comes straight after Jesus teaching on prayer in Luke 11 which includes the Lord's prayer but in Matthew's gospel this promise is not connected to the teaching on prayer that was back in in chapter 6 but Jesus has moved on from prayer in the sermon he's gone on to address other issues like worry like judging others so why does he now come back to this promise at this point in the sermon and and share what we would have expected to have heard back in chapter six in the teaching on prayer. But we need to look at the bigger picture of the sermon itself and the significance of where this promise comes in the sermon. So let's think about the structure of the Sermon on the Mount. And there's a slide here to, to help us. So the sermon begins with a description of kingdom people. Who are the people who belong to the kingdom of heaven? What do they look like? What are their characteristics? There's poverty of spirit. There's mourning. There is meekness. There's peacefulness, being salt and light. Then Jesus describes kingdom righteousness. How should the people of the kingdom live? Well, they're to live out the righteousness of God, which he's revealed to us through the law and the prophets, through the Old Testament. And this is the main section of the sermon. It's the bulk of Jesus' teaching. And we can see very clearly in Matthew's gospel where that main section begins and ends because of that phrase, the law and the prophets. You find it in chapter 5, verse 17, the beginning of the main section, 
and you find it in chapter 7, verse 12, at the end of that main section. And that phrase, the law and the prophets, it acts as, as bookends, as an envelope for that main section of the sermon. And then we have the conclusion, if you like, in chapter 7, verses 13 to 27. And that deals with kingdom distinction. How can we know who is part of the kingdom? And with that, there is also a call by Jesus to decision, a call to commitment to the kingdom. So there's two ways that we can choose. There's two kinds of prophet that we can listen to. There's two kinds of disciple that we can be in, two kinds of builder that we can imitate. And over the next two weeks, we'll, we'll look at those distinctions and those, those two um, two ways and two prophets and two disciples and two kinds of builders. So it's important that we see that the promise of Matthew 7, 7 to 11, comes almost at the end of the main teaching of, Je of, of Jesus in this sermon. Jesus has told us what kingdom righteousness looks like. And then he says, right at the end of this section, ask, seek, knock because our father wants us to receive the gift of this kingdom righteousness and this puts a whole new perspective on the sermon rather than seeing this sermon as a series of impossible demands that we cannot attain to what jesus is actually doing is describing a wonderful gift that god wants to give us Jesus doesn't demand righteousness from us because he knows that we can't be righteous, not in our own strength. Instead, what Jesus does is he gives righteousness to us as a gift. He promises us righteousness. And then he tells us to live out what we've already received. And there is a fundamental difference between those two perspectives. It's the difference between life and death, between joy and despair. It's the difference between true Christianity and man-made religion. Religion demands righteousness, but offers no help to meet that demand. The demand is always far off and we can never attain to it. And that's exactly what the Pharisees did in Jesus' day. And in Luke 11, verse 46, Jesus says, you experts in the law, woe to you because you load people down with burdens they can hardly carry. And you yourselves will not lift one finger to help them. The Pharisees were loading demands on the people, but not offering to help. They, they had no power in themselves to give to the people to meet these demands. But Jesus is different. Jesus does not demand something from us that we could never give. Instead, he tells us to ask our Heavenly Father to give us the gift of righteousness. And he promises that if we ask, we will receive. What a promise. What a hope. Now, this shouldn't come as a surprise to us if we remember the introduction to the sermon where Jesus describes what kingdom people look like. Remember what was one of the descriptions of kingdom people that Jesus gives us in the Beatitudes? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Matthew 5 verse 7. Jesus doesn't say, Blessed are those who are righteous. He says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who know they are not righteous in themselves, but they want righteousness. They, they're hungering for it. They're thirsting for it. They're coming to God to receive it. Because they will receive righteousness as a gift. So Jesus begins his sermon by describing a, a thirst for righteousness, a hunger for righteousness. 
And that is what dis defines kingdom people. And then he describes what that righteousness looks like in practice. And then he tells us to ask for that righteousness, to seek out the righteousness of the kingdom. And he promises that we will receive it. And finally, uh, in this section, he sums up this kingdom righteousness in one sentence, which has become known as the golden rule. Uh, so we've had a golden promise and now the golden rule. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. Everything that Jesus has been teaching about, from anger to adultery, oaths and anxiety, radical, countercultural grace and love, self forgetful giving and praying and fasting, not judging others, not being a hypocrite. It, it can all be summed up with that golden rule do unto others as you would have them do to you. Now, this tells us something important about God's law. It, as Jesus sums up the law, he, he's telling us that the law is good. The law is, it's positive. When we live it out, we're being a positive influence for good. And also we're, we're doing good to ourselves as well. You know, how much better would our society be if we treated others with the same dignity and respect and care and kindness and gentleness and love and grace that we ourselves would like to receive. It'd be a very different world, wouldn't it? But of course, as human beings, we fail to live up to this golden rule. And let's be honest, as Christians, we sometimes fail to live up to this golden rule. And that's why we need to remember that Jesus himself has fulfilled the law and the prophets. That's what he says back in Matthew 5, 17. He fulfilled the purpose of the law in the sense that the Old Testament was pointing us forward to him. It was waiting for him to come and to fulfill all the promises of God in the Old Testament. But Jesus also fulfills the demands of the law. Everything that Jesus tells us to do in his sermon, Jesus did himself. You see, we're not only given a rule that sums up the law and the prophets, we're also given a person. Jesus is the only person who has truly lived out the righteousness of the kingdom. He is the only one who has fully met the demands of God's law. He is the, the only human being in history who has truly done unto others as he would have them do to him. In fact, he went much further than that. He did unto others what we could never do for him. He lavished his love and grace upon us. He gave his life for ours. He took our punishment and bore our sin. All the ways that we failed to meet God's standard of righteousness. Jesus bore the punishment for that. And he gives us his righteousness as a gift. He does unto us what we can never do unto him. And so having received his grace, having received his love and forgiveness, having received his righteousness, we live out now who we are. We live out what we've been given. As one writer put it, we do unto others as Christ has done unto us. That sums up the Sermon on the Mount. That sums up the law and the prophets. Doing unto others what Christ has done unto us. And when we feel like that standard of righteousness is too much for us, when we feel like we, we can't uh, keep living out this righteousness, we, we come to our Father in prayer. We ask, we seek, and we knock. We trust in his promise to give us the good gift of his son's righteousness. 
Well, let's pray now. Let's ask for that gift from our Father. Let's pray. Father, we praise you and we adore you for who you are. You are a good and generous God. You are a loving Father who delights in giving good gifts to your children. The, the issue is not whether you are willing to give us good gifts. The, the issue is really, are we willing to ask? Do we see our desperate need? for what you can give to us? Are we hungering and thirsting for your righteousness? Are we seeking your kingdom and your righteousness and trusting that you'll give us everything else that we need? But we, we must seek these things first. Oh Lord, we, we thank you that, um, that you have given us the, the, the wonderful gift of your son. You've given us his righteousness. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you, you've lived out the, the whole law of God. And we are now called to do unto others as you have done to us. Help us to do that, Lord. Uh, not in our own strength, but in your power that we might say, yet not I, but through Christ in me. In his name we pray. Amen. We're going to close our service by singing about the gift that God has given to us of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. What gift of grace is Jesus, our Redeemer. And there is no more for heaven now to give. We've been given the greatest gift. We've been given Christ. Um, so let's rejoice in that today.
close with these words from the end of Jude. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen.